Hello everyone and welcome to this best of seven series between Grubby and TLO. Now I don't know what tournament this is part of, if any, on the replay site where I actually got these it just said Battle.net so it might just be a Showmax or some practice games or an exhibition map matchup we do not know all we know is that it features two of the best players in the world TLO and Grubby TLO playing a Terran here he has been known for his insanely weird yet powerful uh, aggressive approaches to the game. He is the one who actually made the seven <laughs> one base seven racks all in popular. Uh, as of late, he has actually transitioned into playing a lot more standard. But we always see these weird things from him once in a while. So hopefully, he will keep us entertained in this game. He used to play random, but now plays exclusively Terran. He actually. Uh, said that he regretted playing random for so long. I actually um, thought it was awesome for him to play random. He was the only pro who actually played random and even though it might not give him the edge in the tournament, it certainly did make him a fan favorite, that is for sure, because TLO is incredibly popular. popular. Grubby is actually used to be a Warcraft 3 player. Uh, before Starcraft 2 came out, he did play Orcs and, and now he has transi transitioned into StarCraft 2 for quite some time now. He has been making a name for himself. He has been playing in a lot of tournaments, showing some good results, mainly in the Craft Cup where he did take that, as well as the Copenhagen Games where he came third, I believe. And I'm sorry, uh, a homie telling me to actually 2v2, sorry. I will put myself at busy. And we are going in the first game on Zelnaga Caverns of this best of seven matchup series. Now, a Cybernex score as well as the Gateway going up for Grubby. Second gas just now starting. TLO getting his first gas along with that barracks. So, very standard play by these two. These two players both have a worker inside the main base. This probe gonna go away and actually take control of the Watchtower because the first Marine actually came out. Now TLO is throwing down a factory and is still mining gas, not yet taking a second gas, so we won't be seeing any Cloak Banshee action, but we might be seeing a very fast starport for a Hellion drop, That is, it is very popular these days in a TVP. Meanwhile Grubby now just throwing down his first Zealot might is going to send that across the map, but this is actually very risky because a marine can actually kite him almost forever, especially if you have two marines, they can actually just take him down, and really that is just going to be a loss for Grubby. You usually see a very fast Stalker making his way across the map. Uh, Stalker actually following this up, and still no tech choice by Grubby. We don't see anything else. He is going to throw down a robotics facility, so one gate into Robo. Might we be seeing an expansion behind this? I do believe we are, because one gate, one Robo is just not something you do off of one base. He might be throwing down two more gates to make this an all-in, but I really doubt it will. You can actually see there is a Hellion out on the map. Grubby does spot this, so his next sentry will actually stay up here. Meanwhile, a Zealot is actually making his way into the main base and not doing too much damage, and Grubby is actually going to lose a lot here for nothing. Really, he has not done enough damage at this point, almost losing his Stalker, losing his Zealot that actually ran into the main base. These <laughs> two probes actually nicely placed to actually prevent this Hellion's Hellion from walking up. The Hellion takes down the Stalker. How often do you see that? So really big blunder actually by Grubby losing that initial Stalker and Zealot that could have been so useful to actually hold this off. He is throwing down an extra gateway right now. His warp gate is almost done, so we will be warping those into warp gates as soon as this is done. One observer making his way across the map is going to be able to spot this attack before it actually gets up there. But TLO wisely making a command center. He knows that he can safely expand behind this as well as put some pressure on. Three Hellions inside that medevac, so it will be a Hellion drop. But three Stalkers and a Sentry inside the main base will be able to protect that, especially since I don't see Grubby actually moving out at this point. He is going to move out with a single Stalker just to spot 
the Zalnaga Tower, see if any attack is coming, but this pylon will actually see this drop and he will be well prepared for that. TLO will not drop here at the pylon even though he knows he is spotted. He is instead not going to drop the main base, but going to drop at the bottom of the ledge here and I don't know what he actually plans on doing with these Hellions. He is going to scout, maybe prevent a third base until Grubby actually has a decent force, forcing Grubby to actually pull back to his mineral line. So he knew that Grubby was actually going to be very well ready for this push. Meanwhile, his command center is now done and the first Banshee is out. He is adding on uh, two extra barracks at this point, salvaging his bunker. He is going to place a bunker on the low ground because he knows that he is very safe. At this point, Grubby, even taking his second base, this is actually very risky because there is actually quite a few units that can do a lot of damage for TLO. These Hellions not going to be able to do much, but a lot of Marines and are very good against an Immortal and Stalker Force, actually. Robotics Bay going up for Grubby, so he is going to transition into Colossus, and I love this because we have not seen enough Colossus as of late. The, late ten <laughs> the latest tendency in PvP is actually a lot of Archons and Storms and Feedback and uh, Speed Zealots with that plus one armor, and really Colossus have only made their way into the late game as of, as of late. <laughs> And really, Grubby coming back to its roots might come, uh, might catch TLO off guard actually, because we haven't seen early Colossus in quite a while. TLO actually being caught off guard here, not paying attention for just a single second. And these force fields almost trapping two Hellions, only trapping a single one. So those force fields could have been actually a tiny bit better, but not too big of a deal. Unfortunately for TLO, he has managed to save these two Hellions. They are going to get repaired and his second base is now done along with two Banshees. He is almost done with Stimpak, so he is looking great in this matchup. There are 4239 Harvesters, which is actually not the place Grubby wants to be. He should be slightly ahead in Harvesters because of those mules and that Chrono Boost. He can actually pump out those uh, probes a lot faster than the SCVs. First, Colossus gonna make its way on the field and Thermal Lance being uh, chrono boosted out because Colossus are very, fairly useless without that Thermal Lance upgrade. This initial Stalker gonna take some shots at the Hellion before it being taken out by TLO's two Banshees and these Banshees might actually do a lot of damage. There are only four Stalkers here and really Stalkers are good against Banshees but they're not that, that good because Banshees actually